Hey there, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward, with the Total Fitness Bodybuilding video chat for Friday, October 19th. So today, what I'm going to be doing is hanging out for the next hour, and I'm going to be discussing and answering questions, comments, and feedback that you would like to have covered with regards to bodybuilding and fitness, any specific questions or challenges that you're dealing with when it comes to your workouts, your nutrition program, uh, if there's any injuries or things like that that you're trying to work around, feel free to post those questions, topics, and uh, you know areas of discussion in the video chat window, and I'll do my best to help you out during our video chat today. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure that this is that this is coming through loud and clear, and that you can hear me, that you can see me. So if you could post in our video chat window and let me know that. I would really appreciate it. Just make sure that this is coming through loud and clear. So I'm just going to get a couple things organized on my end, and then we'll take it from there. All right, let's see. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, before I get into answering questions, one thing that I want to... Uh, kind of just share with you is, is kind of a, like I guess a follow-up to last week's video chat where we we're covering some strategies for burning fat building muscle getting in shape and a lot of the strategies weren't so much the physical strategies but the mental and the mindset strategies and you're going to find that that is what holds most people back is it's not the how-to it's not the physical side of things, it's the mental side of things, the blockages and the, the internal BS that we tell ourselves of why we can't do whatever it is that we're trying to do. You know, the reason why we can't go to the gym, the reason why we can't follow a proper meal plan, you know, the reason why we can't whatever. And I just want to kind of put things in perspective. And I was having some uh, discussions with, with a few of my followers and some some people who I'm trying to encourage to go to the gym and look after themselves and work out. I mean, these, these particular people, I mean, they're, they're middle-aged people. They've had some health complications over the years, uh, but it, nothing too serious. You know, they've had some health complications, but, you know, through going to the doctor, through getting treatments and, and medication and all that kind of stuff, they're managing the symptoms of their health complications. And and it's not bad enough for them to take any action yet, right? So they're in that kind of situation. And I'm, I'm sure if, if you look at your own personal life, you know people like this, you know, people who probably had, you know, heart issues, people who are probably suffering from diabetes and controlling it with medication, people who are suffering from high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high whatever, all these different health complications. But they're on medication and they're dealing with the symptoms and it's not bad enough yet for them to actually take some serious action and change, right? It's, it's kind of like, you know, the person who continues to smoke until all of a sudden they find out, oh, they've gotten diagnosed with lung cancer. And now they say, well, gee, maybe I should stop smoking. Well, the damage is already done by that point. And the same thing happens with a lot of people when it comes to dealing with personal health challenges. So anyway, I was having this this discussion with uh, you know some some people who I'm trying to encourage to work out, and and they're afraid of the lifestyle changes. Like yes, intellectually they know they should work out. Yes, intellectually they know they should eat better, but they're like, well, I don't know. It's, it's going to change our lifestyle. I don't know if I have the time to do that. I don't know if I have this. I don't know whatever. And let's just put it in perspective. Let's look at nutrition for one thing. Like some people say they don't have time to eat right. If you're going to the grocery store to buy groceries, it takes just as much time to put junk food in your cart as it does to put healthy food in your cart. Like, I mean, just, just think of it. If you're going around and you're filling up your cart with um, frozen pizzas and hot dogs and french fries and cookies and chips and whatever, I mean, you have to walk down the aisles and put all those things in your, in your cart. You have to make the trip to the grocery store in the first place. It doesn't take any more time to put fruits and vegetables and lean meats and, and, and you know, healthy food into your cart than it does to put unhealthy food into the cart. So from the grocery shopping aspect, the time is the same. Even if you're looking at the meal prep time, because nowadays we have like fast, healthy food 
because like if let's say from the cooking point of view if someone says oh i don't have time to eat right i just get home from work and i'm going to throw out a frozen pizza well a frozen pizza is going to take about 20 minutes or more to prepare you know in, in the oven bacon in the oven if you look at let's cook it up a, a healthy bodybuilding style meal say like chicken potato and some green veggies well you could put a chicken breast on a grill like a george foreman grill or, or similar type of kitchen grill that's going to cook in you know 10 10 15 minutes max you could take baked potato you could bake that in the microwave oven you know 10 15 minutes max you could have like a bag of pre-made garden salad all you got to do is tear it open pour it in a bowl add some you know salad dressing or whatever boom you're ready to go so in the same time that it takes to have a frozen pizza you could have chicken potatoes and salad instead so the time thing doesn't make a difference right it takes just as long to eat junk food as it does to eat healthy food and if someone's saying well i, I want really fast food i want something you know i can just crack open and eat like a a, a bag of potato chips or, or, or something like that well guess what you could like crack open a can of tuna fish <laughs> and eat that right you could have a, a bag of or a you know a, a, like a veggie tray of pre-chopped pre-washed vegetables like carrot sticks celery sticks chopped up broccoli and cauliflower and snack on that you could have instant quick healthy fast food just as easy as you could have processed fast food if you're going out to a restaurant it doesn't take any more time to order a healthy meal than it does to order you know whatever is on the menu for example like a lot of times if i'm eating out i'll go to subway or, or somewhere similar to that and order a large garden salad and get them to chop up a chicken breast and put on that i mean that would be like a, a healthy fast food meal that doesn't take any more time than if i were to go and get you know like burger and fries or something along those lines so the whole idea of it takes too much time to eat healthy is it's it's not a time issue it's, it's a mental issue it's it's getting around the mental block that you have of why you can't eat that way and as far as your workouts are concerned you know a lot of people say well i don't have time to work out and that's a crock of bs because first off it doesn't take that much time to work out especially as a beginner or just someone who's trying to improve their overall health and fitness the time commitment is very low uh, i mean to kind of put it in perspective if you've got 20 minutes a day you can work out and i mean you don't even need to go to the gym you want to i'll give you a 20 minute workout that you can do heck you can do it right after this video chat if you want do a circuit of 10 push-ups 10 body weight squats and 10 jumping jacks and repeat that circuit for 20 minutes now you can rest between sets as much as you need to catch your breath and prepare for the next set but try to keep that pace pretty consistent 10 push-ups 10 squats 10 jumping jacks and repeat that for 20 minutes i guarantee you i don't care how good a shape you're in you will be huffing and puffing and your your chest your legs and your whole body will be pumped from just those three simple exercises done for 20 minutes and the chances are the next day you would even feel delayed onset muscle soreness you would feel the doms muscle soreness in your chest and shoulders and arms and legs just from that simple 20 minute body weight workout so if someone says i don't have time to work out that's a crock of bs i just gave you the 20 minutes i mean if if you're watching if you have time to watch this video chat you've got time to work out right if you're watching a show on netflix you've got time to work out if you just took 20 minutes less sleep you got time to work out so the whole idea of i don't have time that's a crock of bs everybody it, it's not time management it's personal management it's what do you have the priority for because I'm sure if you look through your life, and I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because you guys are, I mean, you're probably already doing a lot of this stuff, hence the reason you're even tuning into this video chat. But I'm just kind of sharing it for maybe some new people who are tuning in who are kind of on the fence, or maybe some of you guys are trying to motivate people in your own life, friends or family members who are giving you these excuses of why they can't work out or why they can't eat healthy. Hey, you could probably refer them to this video chat. but. Uh, getting back to my my rant here, <laughs> uh, the whole idea of not having time it, it's it's not time management, it's personal management and what you're prioritizing. Because I'm sure if you look at your day from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed and all the little things that you're doing, if you were to like write it out, plan it out, there is areas in there 
where you could squeeze in a 20 minute workout. If you really, really tried, if it was like a life or death situation, you could find the time to put in a 20 minute workout. And unfortunately for most people, they don't realize that it actually is a life or death situation. Because if you don't take care of your health or fitness, I mean, what, what's, what's left, right? I mean, that is your whole life. And I mean, I, I was having this discussion earlier with a, with an elderly couple. Well, they're not really middle-aged couple, you know, they're, they're in their fifties and I'm trying to convince them to take care of their health. And but again, they're going through the whole thing. Well, I don't know. It costs money to go to the gym. It's going to, Oh, I don't know if we can put in the time, put in the effort. And I don't know if we want to change our diet. And oh. meanwhile, the, the gentleman, he's had heart complications you know, suffers from high blood pressure. So, I mean, he's already suffering the ill effects and he's just trying to justify why he doesn't need to look after his health when he's already suffering the ill effects of neglecting his health and health and fitness. And I'm trying to convince him to do this for his own life. Do this for the lives of those you care about. You know, your friends, your family, everybody who's depending on you. I mean, just, just look at it, especially if you're a, a, like, you know, you're a bit older, maybe you're you know, 40, 50, 60, you've got a family, you've got people who are depending on you. Imagine if you lost your health, something happened, either, you know, the worst case scenario that you were to pass on, or even if you became a burden, meaning that, you know, you, you became bedridden or some serious health con complications where you couldn't take care of yourself. And then you had to have the other members of your family tend on you because you can't look after yourself. I mean, how much how selfish is that? How much of a burden and how much pain and discomfort are you putting on other people because you were too lazy to look after your own health and fitness when you had the chance, right? Most people don't take action on this stuff until it's too late. And it's, it's, it's a sad thing, but you kind of have to look at what are you doing right now in your own life? And, and where is that going to lead you in the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? I mean, I know we got some young people watching this now. And they're probably not thinking that far ahead. But I mean, if, if you're in your, your 20s and you I mean you're you're overweight and out of shape, where is that going to lead you in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years? Right. And, and a lot of experts these days are saying like obesity is becoming such a serious problem that we're probably like on this uh, on the edge now where the next generation of people are probably not even going to live to be as old as their parents because they'll probably end up dying of complications from being overweight and out of shape. Right. And we're seeing it more and more. Right. We're seeing a lot of young people with health issues that you normally wouldn't have seen until people will well into their middle or, or even their senior years. So this is serious stuff. It is a life and death situation. And you really need to take this seriously. I mean, this goes beyond, you know, build muscle, burn a fat so you can look good on the beach. I mean, yeah, that's all cool. Right. That's 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 the side benefits. That's that's the nice perks. But. For a lot of people, it's a it's a life and death situation, and you really need to take it with that kind of seriousness in order to uh, you know, do what needs to be done to move yourself in the right direction. So that's my my thought of the day, if you will. And with that being said, I'm going to jump in now and start answering some of your questions that are coming through here on the video chat. We've got a lot of people tuning in live, and I know there's a lot of questions coming through, so I want to address those questions. Let's move on. We have Lars is joining us. Samir is joining us. Woodulos, Mike, uh, Gilbert. Uh, we've got guys from Texas, from Scotland, from Newcastle, UK. Uh, Kyle is joining us. Kyle's asking, excuse me, Kyle's asking my thoughts on a one meal a day diet. I'm not a huge fan of a one meal a day diet. You, I mean, you can make it work in terms of like a fat loss thing. It's easy to control your appetite, or sorry, it's easy to control your caloric intake if you're eating one meal a day because there's only so much food you can shove in your belly. You can probably hear my baby out there. He's obviously having a tantrum. He's two years old, right? So this, we're kind of in the terrible twos, two tantrum. So if you hear Harvey having a having his moment out there, realize everything's fine. <laughs> He's just a two-year-old being a two-year-old. Uh, back to Kyle's question about the one meal a day diet. It's, again, can it work? Yes. Do I know people who follow one meal a day? Yes. Would I recommend it? No. <laughs> and, and the reason I don't recommend it is because 
it, it doesn't lead to long-term nutrition habits because let's look at it from a, a bigger picture point of view. Rather than thinking of what you should cut out of your diet, which is what a lot of people do, they say, oh, I got to eat less sugar. I got to eat less fat. I got to eat less calories. I got to eat less, less, less. And then, you know, they're thinking of everything they need to cut out. How about we think of what you should add to your diet? So rather than just thinking of, of all the junk and crap you need to get rid of, let's think of all the good, healthy superfoods that you need to add. Maybe I need to add in more protein. Maybe I need to add in more essential fatty acids, more omega-3s, more fruits, more vegetables, more fiber, more all this good stuff that I should be adding to my diet. I mean, yeah, you could add all that into a one meal a day thing, but imagine if you had two or three or four meals where you could add in all those good healthy foods. You could have a much more well-balanced nutrition program and really think of fueling your body rather than just depleting and depriving your body. So that's the way I like to look at it. I like to have a, a more meals in the day and more opportunities to feed your body the good quality nutrition it needs. Now, with that being said, can you make a one meal a day diet work? You know, for a, a short-term fat loss thing or whatever, yeah, you could probably make it work, but I, I don't recommend it as a long-term lifestyle diet. All right, we've got Max joining us. Uh, we've got ADZ1982 joining us. He's from the UK. Uh, we've got Moses joining us. He uh, says, Lee, I've noticed that doing dips uh, I get pops and snaps in my middle chest. Why is that? Ever since doing dips, I've been noticing that my middle chest is not sore, uh, but I get a discomfort and a strain. What do you recommend? Well, the simple thing. If you find dips, it, it just causes pain, discomfort, doesn't feel right, don't do dips. <laughs> simple as that. There's a lot of other exercises you can do. You don't have to do dips. Now, if you like doing dips and you actually find that it's a beneficial exercise for you, but you're you're getting a few pops and snaps and cracks in the process what i'd recommend first is make sure that you do a thorough warm-up to warm up your chest your shoulders uh, you, you know your triceps your elbows all these areas make sure that you warm up your joints tendons and ligaments uh, beforehand do some lighter warm-up sets if you have access to one of these assisted dip machines where you can reduce your body weight use that like start off with a lot of assistance so you're just kind of going through the motions with very light resistance and then literally do some progressively heavier warm-up sets where you reduce the assistance and lift more of your body weight and then eventually your entire body weight uh, that will allow your body to warm up and, and to limber up all the joints tendons and ligaments so that when you actually do the dips you're probably going to do them more comfortably because look at it this way like if you're just doing body weight dips so you're cold and you just start doing body weight dips you're lifting a lot of weight right off the bat it's like doing an exercise without a warm up right it's to put it in perspective i mean if, if you're 200 pounds and you're doing dips well you're doing dips with 200 pounds that's like running over to the bench press without a warm up putting 200 pounds on the barbell and getting down and trying to rip it out i mean you shouldn't do that right you should start off with a light warm up weight probably like even the empty barbell go through the motions and then do several progressively heavier warm up sets building your way up to your top weight whereas if you're doing body weight exercises like dips and pull ups and things like that yeah i know there's a lot of guys out there who can get away with it but if you're feeling the pain and discomfort from it then you need to do some warm ups before you get into the full body weight exercises and so that's what i would suggest try that and if that still doesn't work, you're you're still getting those aches or pains or just it doesn't feel right, even after you warm up, then don't do the exercise. Do another exercise instead. You know, do some sort of bench press variation. Do some push-ups. Do some different chest presses, dumbbell presses, whatever, pec deck, cable crossover. I mean, there's a lot of different exercises you can do for your chest. You don't have to do dips if they cause pain and discomfort. And that applies for any exercise, not just dips. Okay, Orang is joining us. I uh, have great respect for you and your work. Proud of your efforts. My question is, can we develop leg size with goblet squats only? If possible, how is it possible? <sighs> thanks, for, thanks for your comment. I, I mean, I appreciate it. And when it comes to these people asking these questions, can we do just one exercise and get results? I mean, technically, yes. I mean, one exercise, i.e. the goblet squat, can give you results. 
but why are you limiting yourself to one exercise? Like, why have that minimalist frame of thought? Like, oh, if, if you could only do one exercise, or can I get results with just one exercise? It's like saying, you know, can I live with eating one food? Or, or can I do this with just one? Uh, yes, you can make progress with a goblet squat, obviously, right? I mean, any squats are better than no squats. But why limit yourself? I mean, even if you're training at a home gym with limited equipment, I mean, if, if you're doing goblet squats, obviously you got a set of dumbbells. So you could do um, different squat variations. You could do different lunge variations. You could do uh, like dumbbell deadlifts. Uh, you know, you could do step ups. There's all these different exercises you could do for your legs, even if you don't have access to any formal leg equipment, like leg extensions and leg presses and leg curls and all that. So just open your mind. Think of all the different things you can do, and you can get a full, complete leg workout with just body weight and dumbbell exercises. And if you want to sample one, just go on YouTube and search for Lee Hayward Home Gym Leg Workout. And I have a full routine there. covers exercises for the quads, the hams, the hips, the glutes, and it, all it requires is a set of dumbbells done from home. Right? It's, it's a full-on leg workout, and it, it is a productive leg workout. I mean, even if you have access to a gym, you could do that workout and you would probably stimulate some unique muscle stimulation and get, you know, feeling the soreness the next day because you worked your legs in ways that they're not accustomed to. So if, if you are limited in your workout equipment, i.e. just home gym, dumbbells, something like that, you can still make progress. We have Van City Goobeezy. <laughs> I guess I'm pronouncing your name right. Lee, ever thought about powerlifting? Yes, my friend, I have thought about powerlifting. I have competed in powerlifting. Back in 2004, 14 years ago, I competed in the Newfoundland Provincial Powerlifting Championships back, uh, where was it, in Stephenville. And I actually won my weight division in the bench press competition. I competed in the 110 kilo competition, and I won my division in the 2004 Newfoundland Powerlifting meet. Championships, whatever you call it, provincials. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I, I back in those days, in the early early to mid two thousands, I was very into powerlifting. I actually put bodybuilding totally on the back burner, and I just focused on powerlifting training. I was big into following the West Side Barbell style of training. I was a huge, huge fan of Louis Simmons and Dave Tate. I've got down on my shelf in, in my basement, I've got all the West Side Barbell VHS tapes. I've got like Dave Tate seminar videos. Uh, I've got all that stuff. I'm talking VHS tapes, you know, before the days of Blu-ray, before the days of DVD, we're talking VHS, the ones that you had to rewind and all that shit. Uh, I've got those down there. I've got, what else? Talk about powerlifting. I've got super training up on my bookshelf, right? I'm talking like old school stuff here. Yes, I've thought about powerlifting. I've competed in powerlifting, and I tore my shit up doing powerlifting. And that's part of the reason why I don't do it anymore is because I love the sport, but I have not met a powerlifter who is serious with it and has been doing it for any length of time who is not injured, right? It is a hard sport. It is a, it is a very hard sport. And um, that's that's part of the reason why I don't focus on it now. I just focus on I, I still like to train heavy for me, but it, it's not to the point where I want to compete on the platform anymore. So anyway, that's the answer to that question. We have D, D, DJ My Stary 007. Does potatoes make me sleepy? Why? Uh, <laughs> Anytime you eat complex carbohydrates like that, it does have the way it, it releases the, the, the hormones in your body. You know, you spike in your, your insulin and stuff, and it just it creates that calming sensation. So, I mean, you, you will get, you know, it, the, the, the sleepy hormones very often come about after a high carb meal. Uh, potatoes are, are one for sure. Uh, if you find that potatoes make you sleepy, and I'm, you might have different responses depending on different foods. Like maybe, uh, oatmeal doesn't make you feel as sleepy as potatoes, for example. So you, you want, if you notice this, then I would save potatoes for a meal that's later in the day when you want to be sleepy and try and avoid it earlier in the day when you don't want to be. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people actually structure their meal plans 
so that they have the majority of their carbohydrates later in the day for these reasons alone, because carbs tend to make you feel relaxed tend to make you, you know, make you feel calm and actually make you feel sleepy. So in my case, I like to have a uh, low carb during the day, or very often I'll even follow like an intermittent fasting approach during the day. And then in the evening, I'll have my uh, higher carb meals later in the day. And I find that that actually fits with my macros and then the kind of, you know, the type of diet that I want to follow in terms of, of muscle building and fat loss. But it's, it's planning my meals so that I'm eating the carbs at a time when they're going to help me to have a good night's sleep rather than having them earlier in the day when I'm probably going to feel a bit lazy and sluggish. So it's, that's, it's good that you're aware of this and now you can adjust your diet according to fit your, your lifestyle and, and the way that you want to structure things so that you're eating your carbs when they're more advantageous rather than eating them when they're going to be hindering you. That's, that's, that's good that you're aware of that. Josh is joining us. He says, what are your thoughts on high rep calisthenics? High rep body weight exercises. Uh, actually, you know, at, at the beginning of this uh, video chat, I, I mentioned, you know, if you don't have time to go to the gym, high rep body weight exercise. And I gave a little simple 20 minute workout you could do. But high rep body weight exercises are phenomenal. I mean, I include body weight exercises with all my workouts. Even if I'm going to the gym, I still do high rep, you know, calisthenic exercises. You know, push-ups and pull-ups and squats and sit-ups and and all these different moves and I mean you can get into all kinds of different variations of, of these type of exercises to work your body in different angles but they're great for either when you don't have time to go to the gym and you want to do like a, a home workout boom high rep calisthenics perfect uh, they're great to add in as an addition to a weight training workout or you just want to change things up you know to have some totally unique muscle stimulation and uh, I really, I really do enjoy it. I mean, before I got serious into weight training, I was involved with martial arts, and I mean, part of a martial arts workout was a lot of high rep body weight exercises. We do a whole bunch of different things, uh, not just you know the the punching and the kicking drills and all that kind of stuff, and of course the the katas and things like that, which were all body weight exercises. But we'd also do physical body weight exercises, different you know push ups and squats and and body weight exercise variations. You know, we would do all that kind of stuff. And that's how I got my my big start into really physical fitness was a lot of it's through body weight training. All right. Uh, Mike's got a question here. He says, I go to the gym after work. Oh, shoot. Where was it? I've, again, I flicked my mouse and I lost Mike's question. Where was it? I got it. There we are. Okay. <laughs> My little mouse scroll wheel, right? As soon as I touch it, it's doom, it jumps like half a dozen questions. Anyway, Mike's question. I go to the gym after work at 3.30. I'm a little sleepy, but I make myself go. That's, you know, if, if you're doing a workout after work, right, you, you will probably find that afternoon slump. I mean, uh, that that's common. I, I get that as well, right? But one of the things that you can do is try and, and give yourself a little pick me up. Uh, getting outside for a walk is great. Like even if it's just 10 minutes, I mean, that could be your pre-workout warm up. If you get outside in the fresh air and go for a little brisk 10 minute walk, get the fresh air in your lungs, you know, the, the natural sunlight, all that, that will help to perk you up, especially if you're, you know, you're sitting in an office or, or an indoor environment for your work. Now, if you're working outdoors, that, that's great. But if, if you're like a lot of people stuck in an indoor environment, Get yourself outside, get some fresh air, natural sunlight. That's going to help to perk you up. Also, a, a, a small amount of caffeine, you know, like a, a cup of coffee, espresso, maybe even try a pre-workout. Something along those lines can give you that extra energy boost that you need to uh, make a, a productive workout. And uh, personally, I'm a big fan of, of just a, you know, a black cup of coffee or, or maybe a double espresso or something like that. I find that that gives me a, just enough of a a little caffeine kick in the ass in order to give me that energy boost and to get into the gym and have a productive workout. So I very often do that myself. And, uh, you know, what, what you're experiencing is, is very common. But the big thing is you make yourself go, right? Even though you feel a little bit, I don't know, I'm a bit sluggish, I don't feel like it, blah, blah. Do it. And it's what you're going to find is as soon as you start working out, you start moving your body, the blood starts to flow, and, you know, you, you just get those endorphins flowing. 
you're actually going to enjoy it, right? So even though you don't feel like it in the moment, if you just kind of like suck it up and do it anyway, you know, have a bit of willpower and just say, I got to do it. Just like, you know, very often I'm sure you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I don't feel like going to work today. I'm tired. I'm lazy. I'm whatever. But you make yourself do it because you have to, right? You have to bring home the bacon. You got, you got a job to do. You got to man up and do it. Well, man up and do your workout, right? So very often when you make yourself go, just going through that process is going to, before you know it, you'll actually start to get in the groove and you'll actually enjoy the workout. And I can almost guarantee without exception that at the end of the workout, you're going to say, I'm glad I did it. I feel so much better now that I did my workout versus if you blew it off and went home and sat on the couch and watched Netflix, right? I mean, sitting on the couch watching Netflix doesn't make you feel good, right? The, in the moment, yeah, I say, okay, this is great. But after it's said and done, okay, you've got another show watched. But what did you accomplish? You accomplished sweet F all. Whereas if you went to the gym, you actually accomplished something. You have the, you know, you, you've proved yourself. You've taken a step towards improving your health and fitness and you actually feel better because of it. So making yourself go just, it, it just uh, stimulates all those feel good hormones and chemicals in your body. And you know that you're actually doing something to move yourself in the right direction and be productive. So good for you, Mike. Keep making yourself go to the gym at 3.30. All right. Let's see what else we got. Abby is joining us. Please help. I have mild knock knees, and that's the reason I squat in a wide stance. How much shall I push my limits while squatting? Also, what are easy remedies for mild knock knees? If you have any knee issues, knock knees or any issues, I would recommend seeing a a physiotherapist, a preferably, you know, an experienced one, someone who's used to dealing with someone who has this situation and get some personal attention. That's what I would recommend because they can assess you physically. They can help recommend exercises and movements that you can do, uh, preferably even someone who's used to working out the gym or dealing with athletes, and they'll probably be able to offer some better suggestions on what you can do. Uh, but the big thing that you need to realize when it comes to working around any issue is can you do the exercises comfortably and without pain? Pain is like your body's messenger that tells you something's not right. So if you're doing wide stance squats and you're doing them and, and they feel comfortable, you can go through the motion and you're like, yeah, this, this feels good. There's no pain or discomfort. Then chances are that you're, you're, out, you're doing something right. You know, keep doing what you're doing. If it does cause any pain or discomfort, then you probably want to look into some other exercise variations, maybe like a leg press, maybe like a leg extension or a leg curl or, or some other leg exercises, step ups or lunges or whatever, right? Play around with and find the movements that you can do that fit your body and you can do comfortably rather than trying to think that you have to do movements that cause pain or discomfort. Even if they're the core movements, like a lot of people say you have to squat, you have to bench, you have to deadlift. I mean, yeah, there are the three power lifts, the three core lifts, and they are productive. But if for some reason they don't work for your body type, either you have a, a physical issue, you know, you, you're, you know, you have knee issues, shoulder issues, joint issues, whatever. If you have some physical issue that's preventing you from doing those exercises, then, uh, you know, find another variation instead. There's no law saying that you have to squat, right? You can do other leg exercises and still make results. All right, let's move on. Uh, Woodyolo says that his Nana used to say, you can't put a price on your health. And I tell you, Nana was right. She, she knew her stuff. Uh, Glenn is here joining us. He says, is it okay to do a full body workout in between an upper body workout and a lower body workout? Sure it is. You can make that work with your schedule. Absolutely. I mean, like, let's say you have three days a week to train. You want to have one day to prioritize upper body. You want to have one day to prioritize lower body, and then maybe the third day you're going to do a total body. Hey, fine. I mean, that would allow you to hit all your major muscle groups twice in one week. So you'd have high frequency, and you'd have some good workout variety in there. Yeah, absolutely. You could certainly do that. Uh, okay, we have Z Shan joining us. Vent, uh, Venta Zigquicks. <laughs> uh, Saying calories while injured, question mark. Okay, I, I'm going to try and 
briefly elaborate on this. I'm assuming you mean how many calories should you eat if you're injured and you can't work out? Because I'm assuming if you're injured, you're probably not working out as often or as much. Uh, well, you could adjust your caloric intake based on uh, your body type, your body, your your goals, everything else. So let's just say you, ultimately you want to burn some body fat, and you, you've injured something, so you're not going to the gym as often. Well, you probably reduce your calories to match your energy expenditure. Now, if you're a really skinny guy and you know you're like the skinny ectomorph struggling to gain weight, and you've injured yourself, I'd still eat a high calorie diet and use that time where you're not exercising as much. To create even a bigger caloric surplus that will probably help you with gaining weight right you you could use it that way but it, it really depends on your body type your goals and everything else if, if you've got fat to lose lower the calories if, if you're trying to just fill up your frame and pack on some some meat on your bones keep the calories high another thing you said you're injured just because you're injured doesn't mean you can't work out at all i mean if you've got an upper body injury you could probably still train your lower body you could probably still do cardio if you got a lower body injury, you could probably still train your upper body and you could do some uh, cardio that involves your upper body. Maybe things like swimming or, or maybe, you know, using a rowing machine or something that's that's more upper body intensive rather than lower body intensive. So even though you're injured, it doesn't mean you have to sit on the couch and watch Netflix, right? <laughs> you know, you can still go to the gym and work your other functioning body parts instead. All right, let's move on. Uh, Kyle's asking, are bread, are there any type of breadcrumbs that are diet friendly? Um, maybe a sprouted grain bread, but what's up with breadcrumbs? <laughs> um, just to see any posted there, friggin' I'll answer it. But, uh, when it comes to, uh, diet uh, in terms of bread, you can make that fit with your diet, right? I mean, it ultimately comes down to making the foods you eat fit within whatever dietary guidelines you want. So if you're going to eat bread, choose sprouted grain bread, preferably. Like that's better than like a, a whole wheat bread, which is better than a white bread, right? So you look at the different grades of bread. Like white bread is just, you know, think of it like simple sugar. Like white bread, think of it just the same as you would white sugar. Right. It's just very uh, the, the, the nutrients are stripped out of it unless they've enriched it with, you know, artificial nutrients added in, which you don't want that crap anyway. But white bread, bottom of the barrel. Right. You don't want to eat that whole wheat a bit better. You know, you're getting some some of the more of the actual natural nutrients of, of the wheat in the bread. Sprouted grain, even better again, because you actually have the live sprouted grains that are making the bread. So if you're going to choose bread, choose a sprouted grain bread. Uh, also, maybe you'll, you know, it's called Ezekiel bread. That's actually a brand name of sprouted grain bread. But if you're going for bread, choose the sprouted grain whenever possible. And the big thing is to make sure that the, the portions of whatever you're eating fit in line with your goals. I mean, if, you, if your goal is fat loss, then you're going to have to limit the amount of bread you eat in order to keep your carbohydrates and calories low enough to be in a caloric deficit for fat loss. So, you know, obviously it doesn't mean you have a free for all where you can eat as much bread as you like because, you know, you're going to build a bread basket <laughs> if you keep eating too much bread. But now vice versa, if your goal is to pack on mass, you know, you're skinny ectomorph trying to fill up your frame. Hey, foods like bread can help you do that. I mean, when I was a skinny kid in college trying to bulk up, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on whole wheat bread. I didn't even know about sprouted grain bread back in college, but I, that's what I used to eat. That was my lunch. I'd have four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on whole wheat bread and two chicken breasts and a gallon of water and i have that and eat that throughout the day when i was a skinny teenager going through, skinny teen early, early 20s going through college that was my food that helped me to bulk up and fill up my frame and crack over the 200 pound mark and actually you know start looking like i had, I had some meat on my bones if you will so that's what i did to overcome the the scrawny, skinny Lee, the back in the day, did that. Back, that was back in the late nineties, uh, early two. Actually, no, it was back when I was in college. Was in the late nineties. It was through ninety seven onwards. That's when I was uh, eating the the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and chicken breasts at school. All right, we have Logical Order joining us. He says, "How do you cut without losing muscle mass, and can you decrease?" waist size uh 
rather than trying to, I mean, can you decrease waist size? Of course you can, right? I mean, yes, with <laughs> you lose fat, you're going to, your waist is going to get smaller, right? That's, just, that's a given. Uh, but rather than trying to go into too much detail about this, I'm going to ask you to send me an email and send me an email to leeh at leehayward.com. Because for those of you who were here last week, you may recall, I actually sent out a complete fat loss training guide. It was actually a bodybuilding fat loss program. And I know many of you who are tuning in right now, I, I've actually emailed you your programs. If, if I haven't done it yet, uh, give me time. I still got a bunch of them coming through in my inbox there that I've got an email about. But email me at leeh at leehayward.com and say, I would like a copy of your uh, bodybuilding fat loss program. And it's actually a pre-contest bodybuilding cutting guide, which explains how to cut body fat without losing muscle in the process. So if, if you want that, just send me an email and I'll, I'll send you that rather than me trying to elaborate on it. And if, if you want to hear me elaborate on it, go back and watch last week's video chat replay because I went over the whole, that's what last week's talk was all about, strategies for getting shredded. We did full hour long talk on it. Uh, Sky Hunter is joining us. He says, bodybuilding is a way of life. And he says, love y'all. <laughs> Operation Truth, saying great content as always. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, Dave is joining us. Is looking good. Keep it up. Appreciate it. Trying to look good and keep up. <laughs> uh, Lassie is joining us. Logical order. And this is another question. Uh, okay, he's replying to someone's issue about squatting. Uh, Zish. Okay, Z Shan's got a question. Lee, as someone who's getting back into the gym after a layoff, how long should I wait to switch from a full body workout to an upper lower body split through the days of the week? That's really an individual thing. There's no right or wrong answer to this, but I'm going to give you some guidelines. I generally recommend a beginner or someone who's getting back into the gym, which if you're coming back to the gym after a layoff, you have to treat yourself like a beginner because you're starting off from scratch all over again. Start off with a total body workout three days a week. It's simple. It works. You know, just, just keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Total body workout three days a week. Boom. Three non-consecutive days per week, ideally. So work out one day, take the next day off. Work out one day, take the next day off. Yeah, you get the idea. After you've been doing that for several weeks, maybe six to 12 weeks, somewhere in that time frame, you're probably going to find that, one, you're going to get bored with the exercises, and you're probably going to want to change things up because you're kind of getting bored of doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, also, you're probably going to find that certain exercises are going to start to plateau, meaning that you're not able to increase your lifts on certain exercises. So you're just like... When you first started that workout, you were making gains every week. You know, you were adding five pounds to the barbell. You were increasing, you know, getting an extra rep per set. You were making steady little bits of progress week after week. After you've been doing it for several weeks, you're going to find that you're not making progress anymore. Or worse, you're probably actually even losing strength. Meaning that, like, hey, like last week I could do 100 pounds for 10 reps in this exercise. This week I can only get eight reps. What's up with that? So if you find any of this stuff happening, you're getting bored with the workout and you just mentally and physically want to change it, or you find that your progress is plateaued or even starting to regress, meaning that you're not even able to duplicate the same lifts that you were previously, that's a sign that you need to change up your workouts. So you just change it up. Uh, you could do a totally different split, you know, maybe like an upper lower body split. You could just change up the exercises, change up the set and rep pattern. There's a lot of things you could change, but a good next step progression for a beginner. If you're plateaued with a total body workout, switch it up to say like an upper lower body split or maybe even a push pull legs where you do your pushing exercises one day, your pulling exercises the next and then your leg exercises the following day. Something like that would be a good next step progression. All right, let's say uh, what else we got. Operation Truth. What about sissy squats? I see uh, they have those devices you use for that. Uh, sissy squats, some people love them, some people hate them. I actually did them last night as part of my workout. I like them. I find that they, they work well. Uh, the sissy squat, uh, it's 
It's a unique squat variation that really isolates the quads and it stretches the quads. So it's a stretch exercise for the quads. There's, there's actually not a whole lot of exercises you can do that really stretch out the quads like the sissy squat does. So um, that's what I like that exercise for. It's a very strict squat variation. You're not going to be able to handle much weight. In fact, when I did them, I did them with body weight. And that's what I actually do. I just do high rep body weight sissy squats. And I find that that allows me to do the exercise without any aches or pains in the knees. And I, I can do them on a regular basis that way. If you start adding weight to it, it's kind of, it might work, but it's also like, it's not necessary. Like I would rather you do your sissy squats towards the end of your leg workout when your legs are already pre-exhausted and that, so you don't have to add extra weight and then just doing a high reps and focus on pumping up the quads. Uh, so that's the way I do them. I just do them high rep pumping exercise uh, with body weight and I find that they're very effective and I get a, a killer pump to the quads without any excess strain on the knees. Uh, Jonas is joining us. Why does mental stress affect physical performance so much? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Whoa, where, where do we begin with that one? I, I, th I think it could affect your performance so much because, well, think of it from a, a practical point of view. Like, your brain is the most calorie-hungry muscle in the body, if, if you want to consider your brain a muscle. Like, if you look at what uses up the most energy, the most glucose, the most calories on, like, a pound-for-pound -pound basis, the brain is this energy-hungry mechanism that's just, uh, like, a gas guzzler. You know, your muscles, yeah, they burn calories, they burn energy, but not to the extent that your brain does. So if you're under a lot of stress and you're under a lot of mental stress, that is burning up a lot of, of energy. And it's taking away from your physical energy. I mean, just, just think of it. If, if you go to the gym and you got a lot of shit on your mind and a lot of stuff, that's, that's taking away from the energy that you could otherwise put forward into your training. So there's, there's a lot of correlation to that. Harvey's, Harvey's going through some mental anguish out there now. Oh, boy. Anyway, you can probably hear him. Hello, Harvey. How are you? Oh, well, poor fella. I, I, as soon as I pull up this video chat, I'm going to go through and play with him a bit, try and calm him down, because I know i got to give Mommy a break, or she's going to be suffering some uh, <laughs> some mental stress if I don't want to help out very soon. Uh, man, that, that again, that, mental stress and physical performance, it, it's, it's a, a loaded question, right? But... It does have a big impact, and I mean, if, if you're if you've ever gone through periods of stress, you know that it does hinder uh, your your body in, in general, right? Second, I gotta go running there. I got a bit of a stuffy nose. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera in my voice or whatever, but it's coming through. Um, I felt I tell you what, I'll probably do a, a video in the future covering this in more detail because this this is such a loaded question that i, I feel like if i'll do injustice trying to do like a little one or two minute answer for it this is such a big loaded one i think i'll probably like dedicate what maybe I'll, I'll dedicate you know a, a segment to a video chat to this or maybe even just do a separate like ask lee video q a and, and cover some some strategies for this one but again i, I don't want to do it just disservice but uh, it is such an important topic for sure all right, let's let's move on here. We have Sky Hunter joining uh, Maximilian. See, some days I struggle to hit my macros. Can I make up the majority of my carbs and protein by blitzing pre-soaked oats with added protein powder? This would be a top up on a couple solid of a couple couple of solid meals. Sure, you can do that, especially if you're in a bulking phase. You know, you're trying to hit those numbers to be in a caloric surplus in order to reach your minimum requirements of protein, carbs, and fat so that you're in the, the ideal range that you need to be for gaining. Can you do that with shakes, you know, protein powder and oats? Absolutely. Uh, you could do a blender smoothies. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this, right? You could just do it in a shaker cup. But a good one that I'd recommend, especially for like a hard gainer trying to pack on mass, get out the blender. I mean, you could put, uh, if you want like a high calorie blender smoothie, I'll just give you some uh, examples here. You could put whole milk, full fat milk in the blender, put in a couple scoops of protein powder, 
Uh, you could put in some fruit, like a banana, um, you know, if whatever, like whatever type of fruit you fancy. I mean, you could even put in like an avocado in there. Uh, you could put in some natural peanut butter. Uh, and, you know, if you want a scoop of oatmeal, like the, the quick oats is usually a good one for, for putting in blender smoothies and, and stuff like that. Blend that up. I mean, you have an instant, very uh, nutrient-dense, calorie-dense, protein-dense liquid meal. And I mean, that would be something great for topping up, you know, your, your, your calories and macros for the day, especially if you're in a bulking phase and trying to fill out your frame. I mean, you can jam in a lot of, of calories and a lot of nutrition in blender smoothies and, and vice versa. You can make them lean for fat loss as well. Right. So, I mean, you, you can make it work either way. You can have a very high calorie dense smoothie or you could have a very uh, low calorie nutrient dense smoothie. For example, like if, if if you wanted to switch it, you could make it. For example, uh, one that I like to do a lot is I'll put uh, liquid egg whites, which are fat free, uh, put some protein powder and maybe some uh, frozen berries, like frozen strawberries. And you could blend that up. And that would be a very low carb, high protein, uh, almost like a frozen dessert type of treat. And that would be ideal for a fat loss diet because, again, it's, it's so low in carb, low in calories, but high in quality protein versus if you went the other route that I mentioned before with the, the whole milk and the peanut butter and the banana and oats and all that, that would be higher in fat, higher in carbs and better suited for a bulking diet. So, again, you, you could use that blender for, for, you know, make it fit for your mass building program, make it fit for your fat loss program. It just, you know, it just takes a bit of creativity on your part. but. Uh, Absolutely. You can definitely use those, uh, uh, you know, you, you can top up your macros with, with shakes or smoothies. Uh, let's see. And then to follow up with that, he said that he struggles to eat a lot. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's easier to drink extra calories than it is to eat extra calories. So for you hard gainers out there, take advantage of the blender, drink them down, right? Even if you look at some of the old footage and stuff old pictures like arnold was a big fan of blender smoothies back in the day when he was trying to bulk up as well right i mean the blender smoothie is, is a bodybuilding staple i've got gene joining us from northern ireland he says I just started back to the gym two months ago i've been powerlifting but thinking of following your new over 40 workout looks good hey thanks for tuning in gene appreciate it uh got Lars joining us. Lee, do you deal, how, how do you deal with recovery? I'm 49. It's really becoming an art form in and of itself to recover enough to be able to train hard and efficient. I do compound lifts plus gymnastics. Well, whoa, that's that's a loaded workout in itself. I mean, weightlifting is, is a workout that you have to recover from. Gymnastics is another intense workout that you have to recover from. So if, if I were in your situation, it just comes down to actually reducing the volume of, of those workouts. I mean, I, I don't know how many days a week you're, you're in the gym. I don't know how many days a week you're in the gymnastics gym. Uh, but it, you need to look at recovery in general. And, and I'll, I'll kind of share how I go about it. With my own workouts, I have an intensity day and an active recovery day intensity day active recovery day and i'll sh explain how it works i'll go to the gym and do weight training one day and then i'll do some low intensity cardio the next go to the gym do weight training one day low intensity cardio the next and that's how i've been doing it for the past year or more like as i've gotten older I, that's that's the routine that i find works the best for me it allows me to feel good recover and have good workouts when i do push myself but then I allow time to rest and recover in between those workouts. So a, a typical week for me is go to the gym, do weight training. Next day, get out and do some low intensity cardio, be it like going for a walk, going for a bicycle ride, whatever. If, if the weather sucks, I'll, I'll go to the gym and I'll do cardio there. Uh, I also have like an elliptical machine at home in my basement. So I'll kind of use that sometimes. But if, if at all possible, I get outside and do my cardio outdoors. And that's what I do. Weight training one day, cardio the next. Weight training one day, cardio the next. And I refer to it as the yin and yang workout schedule because you have the high intensity alternated with the low intensity. So every day I'm getting some physical exercise, but it's done in such a way that my body can recover from it. 
It's not pushing myself with high intensity day after day after day, because if you do that, your body's going to break down and you don't have a chance to recover. So alternating high intensity with the low intensity works really well. So again, I don't know your particular schedule, but you're going to have to find some way to do that. And the thing you need to realize is weightlifting plus gymnastics are two high intense exercises. So maybe you're going to do like one or two weightlifting workouts a week, one or two gymnastic workouts a week. And then the other days you're going to have to do some just low intensity, you know, cardio or some, something like that. So again, it's I, just some food for thought. Again, I don't know your individual schedule. I mean, if, if you'd like to discuss this and probably, you know, have, have a chat about it, Hey, send me an email or, or go on my, my website, leehayward.com, and up in the top menu bar, you can book a 20-minute coaching call with me, and we can probably discuss this over the phone, come up with a you know a, a realistic action plan that's right for you. But uh, based on what I know that right now, that's what I would suggest. And, and that applies to anybody tuning in, listening to this video chat. If, if you would like some help with your workouts, you would like some help with your nutrition program, and, you know, like we're covering a lot of stuff here, but we're kind of just dabbing in, in different areas. You know, we're not really diving deep into any one particular area. If you would like some personal help with this, you know, with your situation, whether it's building muscle, burning fat, or some specific health challenges that you're dealing with, whatever it is, mental blocks that you're dealing with, if you would like to discuss this and come up with a realistic action plan that's right for you, then I encourage you to go to my website at leehayward.com. Up in the top menu bar of that website, you're going to see a link called Coaching. Click on that, and that explains the details of my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. But it also gives you the opportunity where you can sign up for a free 20-minute coaching call with me. And we're going to get on the phone one-on-one -on -one or get on Skype or Zoom or, or whatever platform you want to chat through. <laughs> I mean, there's so many platforms. But if you live in Canada or, or the United States, we can do it over the phone. If you live... Uh, you know, somewhere else in the world, we're probably going to jump on Skype or jump on Zoom because just dealing with phone issues when you're dealing with international phone calls can be uh, uh, awkward and pricey at the same time, right? So if we'll, we'll choose the best option for us to have our conversation, and we're just going to have have a chat, and, and you know, and we'll come up with a realistic action plan that's right for you, you know. And so I'll. If, if this is something that you're interested in, I encourage you to try it out. Come on, head on over to my website, click on that coaching link, sign up for a free coaching call, and uh, you know you can book it into, into my calendar. I have a, a calendar link there where you can see my time slots, and you just find one that works best for you. You choose that, and then we'll have that scheduled call where we can have a chat and uh, you know come up with an action plan that's right for you. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, we have uh, Wood Yellow saying, uh, does the Smith machine deserve the bad rap it gets? I like it, especially for shrugs. You know, don't get caught up in what other people think. If you like the Smith machine, then by gosh, do the Smith machine. I, I like it. I use it for certain exercises, right? Like, uh, don't get caught up in all the, the, the crap that you read online. I mean, if the Smith machine was such a piece of junk that a lot of people say it is, there wouldn't be a Smith machine. The reason that there's a Smith machine in almost every single gym in the world is because there's a lot of people who like the Smith machine, they benefit from it, and it works, right? Former Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates, used to use the Smith machine for bench presses and squats. He won the Mr. Olympia, was it five or six times? I can't remember exactly what it was, but I mean, he, Mr. Olympia, best in the world, used the Smith machine. If it's good enough for a Mr. Olympia, it's probably good enough for you and me. So if you like it, it works for you, keep using it. Who gives a shit what the, you know, the Joe Blow keyboard warrior types in the comments on bodybuilding.com, right? Let, let him type whatever he wants. If you like it, you use it. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Okay, what else we got here? We have uh, trying to go through a few more before I clue it up for the day here. Where was I? Again, I did that stupid little mouse scroll wheel thing and I lost my place. Uh, we have uh, Lassie B joining us. What's up, Lee? What do you think about the leg press? Do you think it's a mass building movement or not? I like doing leg press. And yes, it is a good compound mass building leg movement. Uh, the thing I like most about the leg press 
is it allows you to train your legs heavy and give your back a rest. If you're always doing heavy squats, you're always loading your spine, you're always stressing your central nervous system, sometimes you need to give your back a break but still train your legs. That's why I like the leg press because it allows you to do that. Right. So, I mean, I know some people give it a bad rap, but again, if the leg press didn't work and people didn't like it, people didn't get results, there wouldn't be one. So it's just like I said with the Smith machine earlier. If you like it, it works for you, use it. Who gives a shit what anybody else thinks? Uh, so, oh, oh, hello. I, I think this might be my cue to, to finish up the, the video chat. Oh, he was just outdoors playing with mommy. In the rain. In the rain. Mommy. Yeah, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Mama. Well, Mama. well, mom's over there, but who's that on the computer? Is that Herbie? Me. Yeah. It's a computer, yeah. Yeah. Mama. Yeah, mama's right there. Yeah. Oh, wave to everybody. Say hi. There's the camera right there, actually. You wave to the camera right there. Say hi. Say hi Can everybody. you wave? Yeah. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Is this my cue to clue up the video chat? And I've been doing this for about an hour now. And is it cute? To... Yeah. Are we going to have supper? Yeah. What's on the menu for supper? Just have chicken Ooh. and broccoli. And chicken, and broccoli, and some mashed potatoes. And mashed potatoes sounds like a good meal. That's a bodybuilding meal: chicken, broccoli, and mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, love you, buddy. Here. Here. Okay. He wanted to come in early. Oh, I know he wanted to come in. I heard him out there yeah. hooting and hollering. Well, that's why he was crying. Yeah. I wanted to come in with you. All right. Okay, guys, that's my cue. I mean, when, when, when the man comes in and tells me that, hey, it's, it's time to clue it up and have supper, so I'm going to clue it up. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I know there's a lot of questions come through that I didn't get to, but I do appreciate you tuning in. appreciate all your support. No, no, don't don't touch that. Whoops. Hey, buddy, he's going to knock my camera over. That's okay. Yes. All right. So, again, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to have the replay of this video chat posted up. And I will have the timestamps with all the different topics of discussion posted there as well. I'll get that done within the next 24 hours. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I would recommend that you go back and check out last week's video chat, especially if you're interested in fat loss. Last week's video chat, I have the replay and the timestamps posted up there. That one went into a lot of detail with fat loss. And I know we had a few fat loss related questions here. So if you want more information about that, check out last week's video chat replay. And if you would like some personal help, you would like to get on the phone with me and, and discuss your own training situation, uh, come up with a workout and nutrition plan and a mindset and strategy that works for you and your situation, help you achieve your personal fitness goals, hey, sh either shoot me an email at leeh at leehayward.com or just head on over to my website at leehayward.com and you can book a coaching call with me by clicking on the coaching tab up there in the top menu bar and we'll get on the phone. And we will have a chat, just you and me, and we'll come up with a strategy that works for you and your situation. So there you go, guys. Have yourself a great day. Have yourself a great weekend. And I look forward to talking to you next Friday. Take care. Over and out.